All right, this video here we're going to look at expanding logarithms. So here we'll be using these properties here. We have the log of m times n with base b is equal to the log of m with base b plus the log of n with base b. If you have terms multiplied, we split those up or expand them using addition. And then here we have the log of m over n with base b is the log of m with base b minus the log of n with base b. If we have division, then those are expanded using subtraction. And then the log of m raised to the n with base b is equal to n times the log of m with base b. What this property is saying is that we can take this exponent here and bring it down in front and multiply it to the log. All right, so let's look at some problems. This might be a kind of a lengthy video. I'm trying to hit everything you might come across. I've got about I've got eight problems I'm going to work. So let's take a look at the first one. All right, so we have the log of seven times x with base seven. So here you can see that these two terms are multiplied seven times x. So we split that up. And that's the log of 7 with base 7 plus the log of x with base 7. Since they're multiplied, we split them up using addition. Okay, And look at this. We can take this even further. I have a video on evaluating logs without using a calculator. And you can check that out. And it explains more of how we simplify this. But see how the base of the log is 7? and this is 7. Since these are the same, our answer is our exponent. And remember, since there is no exponent there, it's understood to be a 1. So this term here is actually just 1 plus log x base 7. And this would be our answer. Alright, let's look at another one. Alright, so here we have the log of x over 100. Since this is division, division splits up using subtraction. So that's the log of x minus the log of 100. Okay. Now, this term here can be simplified further. If you remember, if there's not a base there, it's understood to be 10. So this is going to be log x minus log, and that's base 10. I'm going to go ahead and write it there, but you don't, you don't have to write it. It's just understood to be 10. Now look at this 100. Can we rewrite the 100 as 10 raised to a power? We can write it as 10 squared. And since the base here on the log and the base on this exponential term they're both the same. Our answer is our exponent. So that's log x minus 2. Okay. Let's look at another one. All right, I have the log of x times y cubed. This is multiplication. Multiplication splits up into addition. So that's going to be the log of x with base b plus the log of y cubed with base b. Now when we're expanding the logarithms, we don't want an exponent. So we need to get rid of this exponent. So if you remember the last property, it said that we can take the exponent and pull it down in front. So that's log x base b plus, and now we're going to take the 3, pull it down in front, and multiply it, log y base b. And this would be your answer. All right, let's look at problem 4. All right, so we have log square root of x over 64 with base 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this as the log of x, and I'm going to change this radical to a one-half power. Okay, 
remember if you go from exponent uh, from radical form to exponential form remember the property that says the nth root of a is equal to a to the 1 over n okay that's how you go from radical to exponential whatever the index on your radical is is the denominator here and that's 1 over that and if there's not a number there it's understood to be 2 so that's where the 1 over 2 comes from so now this is division we can split that up using subtraction so that's log oh, and that's base 4 so that's log x to the 1 half with base 4 minus log 64 with base 4 alright so now we need to take this exponent and bring it down in front so that's 1 half log x base 4 minus log base 4 now let's look at this 64 can 64 be rewritten as 4 raised to a power this base raised to a power well 64 is the same thing as 4 cubed 4 times 4 times 4 is 64 okay now that these are the same our answer is our exponent here so that's 1 half log x base 4 minus 3. Okay, see so here's this part and then this is just 3. Alright, number 5. Alright, so first thing I want to do, this is the log of x over y and I'm going to rewrite it as an exponential and that's one-fifth okay once again it's that it's that property the nth root of a is equal to a to the 1 over n and you can see here n is 5 so it's all of this raised to the 1 over 5 now now I'm going to use that property an exponential property that says a over b to the n is equal to a to the n over b to the n. Remember the property that says you raise each one of these to this exponent outside. And so I'm going to raise each one of these to the one-fifth power. So that's log x to the one-fifth over y to the one-fifth. And look, I have division. So I can split that up using subtraction. And so that's going to be log x to the one fifth minus log y to the one fifth. And then I'll use that property that says I can move each one of these exponents in front and multiply it. So I get one fifth log x, nope, I'm sorry, just log x minus one fifth, move the one fifth in front, log y. And there's my answer. All right, let's look at problem six. All right, here I've got the cube root of x squared y over 25. So just like in the last problem, I've got log base 5, and this is going to be x squared y over 25 to the one third. Okay, all right, so I just rewrote it as an exponential. And now I'm going to use that other property that says I can raise each term inside the parentheses to this exponent outside. We did that in the last one when we raised the numerator and denominator to that exponent outside. And so that is going to be log x squared to the one third y to the one third over 25 to the one third. 
All right, so now looking at this term, okay, remember the property that says a to the m raised to the n is a to the m times n. When you have exponents like this, we multiply them, and that's what we'll do here. We'll multiply these. And so that is going to be log x and 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds y to the 1 third over 25 to the 1 third. Right. Now let's split this thing up. So here we have multiplication and we've got division here. So the easiest way to remember it, if it's multiplied across the numerator, it's going to have an addition sign. And if whatever's in the denominator is going to have a minus sign in front of it. So this is log x to the 2 thirds. And see how that's times? So that's plus y, I'm sorry, plus log y to the 1 third. And then see how this one's in the denominator? So that's minus log 25 to the 1 third. And let me go back. I forgot to put the base on there. All right, so now we have the property that says we can take each one of these exponents and we can pull them down in front and multiply them. So that's 2 thirds log x base 5 plus 1 third log y base 5 minus 1 third log 25 base 5. Alright, so it looks like we're done, but look at this. See how we have a base 5? Well, 25 can be written as what? 5 squared. So we'll do that. So that's 2 thirds log x base 5 plus 1 third log y base 5 minus 1 third log and the 25 we're going to rewrite as 5 squared with base 5. So we get 2 thirds log x base 5 plus 1 third log y base 5 minus 1 third. Okay, now see how these are the same? So my answer is my exponent. So that's times it's one third, it's one third times this. And this is just two. See, it's your exponent. And so that's two thirds log x base five plus one third log y base five minus, and then one third times two is two thirds. All right, let's look at number seven. All right, so this one, first thing we're gonna do is take the radicals and rewrite them in exponential form. So that's log x to the one half y cubed over z cubed w to the one fourth. So all I did is each radical I wrote as an exponential. All right, so now we have log x to the one half, and see how it's multiplied across the numerator? That's plus log y cubed. Now, everything in the denominator is gonna have a minus sign in front of it. So that's minus log z cubed minus, because w is in the denominator, minus log w to the, to the one fourth. Okay. And so now we'll use the property that says we can take each exponent and pull it down in front. 
one half log x plus three log y minus three log z minus one fourth log w. So, I mean, just remember, it's really easy. Whatever's multiplied across the top is going to have a plus sign in front of it, and whatever's going across the bottom is going to, across the denominator, is going to have a minus sign in front of it. All right, so let's take a look at the last one. Oh, I left off the bracket there. All right, so I've got natural log of x to the fourth square root x squared plus 3 over x plus 3 to the fifth. So the first thing I'm going to do is natural log x to the fourth, and I'm going to rewrite this in exponential, so that's the square root of all that. So it's the x squared plus 3 raised to the one half, and that's over x plus 3 to the fifth. All right, so now we've got multiplication here. So that splits up into addition. So that's natural log x to the fourth plus, because it's multiplication, natural log x squared plus three to the one half. And then this is in the denominator, so that's minus natural log x plus three to the fifth. And now I'm gonna use the property that says I can take the exponents and bring them in front and multiply. So that's 4 natural log x plus 1 half natural log x squared plus 3 minus 5 natural log x plus 3. All right, so here's my answer. So hopefully this video helped. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, thanks.